okay, there's like a million ways to go about creating a budget. They all involve talking to marketing to get a feel for the sales that are predicted for the next period and talking to other people around the company to get their input about what the future looks like and how we can all work together to meet our goals. But let's start with a sample and pretty simple budgeting problem. First of all, why do we budget? Well, it requires a management to plan ahead. We can get caught up in the day-to-day -day business and not think about big picture items. Budgeting forces us to do that. It gives us definitive uh, objectives for evaluating our performance. Uh, did we make our sales uh, goals that we intended? It creates an early warning system. If we predicted sales in January of $10,000 and we only hit $8,000, it gives us an early warning that's something that may be amiss. We don't have to wait till December to think about it. Uh, it facilitates coordination of activities. If we've got ahead a certain goal of creating a certain number of units, uh, HR has to give us the manpower to do it, and the purchasing department has to give us the direct materials to get it done. It also results in greater awareness of the entity's overall operations, so it forces management to not just think about the corporate headquarters, but to think about the whole company and it motivates personnel through throughout the organization to meet planned objectives. If we know what the big picture is, we can figure out what our little part of it is, and we know the goals that we have to meet. So the master budget is really made up of a bunch of uh, smaller budgets. We'll start with sales, and then we'll create a production budget, which means we've got to look at materials, labor, and overhead. Then we'll look at SG&A, and we'll come up with a budgeted income statement. That's what we're going to do today. Uh, to get to the financial budgets, in other words, how much money are we going to spend on new equipment, uh, what's our cash picture going to look like, and what's our balance sheet going to look like, that's a much bigger project. Today, we're just going to try to come down this line here and create a budgeted income statement. So as I say, there's like a million different ways to create a budget. This is just one way to do it. This is a company that creates fertilizer called Basic 2. It has two components, Krupp and Dirt. Get it? And those two things get mixed. That requires some labor hours. And uh, we create our uh, bags of basic two that we sell for 63 bucks a bag. So the first budget we start out with is the sales budget. It tells us that the marketing department says we're going to sell 40,000 bags in quarter one and 50,000 bags in quarter two at the sale price of 63 bucks a bag. So in Excel, I'll put in 40,000 buck, 40,000 bags and 50,000 bags times $63. So this cell times this cell gives me the first quarter sales. This cell times this cell gives me the second quarter sales. And this gives me the total sales for the first half of the year. So that was the sales budget. Now we have to do the production budget. Well, you say, well, if we plan to sell 40,000 bags, all we have to do is make 40,000 bags in quarter one. Well, that's not exactly true. We might underestimate our sales, so we want to have a little extra, and we need some bags to start on that first uh, day sales in quarter two. So we're going to take our projected sales in quarter one, add our desired ending inventory at the end of the quarter, subtract the beginning inventory. We don't have to make those. They're already in our inventory, and that will give us our total production for the quarter. So we said we, want to make, we think we're going to sell 40,000 units. We want to have 15,000 15, units in the ending inventory. We predict that we'll have 10,000 in the beginning. So 40 plus 15 minus 10 means we're going to have to make 45. For the second quarter, we project that we're going to sell 50. We want to have 20 at the end, but we don't have to make the ones that are in the beginning inventory. That's the 15,000 units. So our total production for the uh, first half of the year is 100,000 units. 45,000 units we're going to produce in quarter one, and 55,000 units we're going to produce in quarter two. Okay, now that we know the production amounts, we can do our budgets for our direct materials. We know how many units of basic two we're going to produce in quarter one, that's 45,000. We know that in each bag of Krupp, there is five, excuse me, in each bag of basic two, there are five pounds of Krupp. So we'll multiply those two numbers together to get our total amount of pounds of Krupp needed in the first quarter. So we're going to make 45,000 units. It takes five uh, pounds of Krupp per unit. So we're going to need 225,000 pounds of Krupp. But just like on our basic product, we want to have an ending inventory of Krupp 
just in case we underestimated the sales and just in case we need to start selling stuff on the first day of the second quarter we better have some crop ready to go so we're going to add our desired inventory ending inventory and subtract our beginning inventory we don't have to buy that because it's already there so we want to have a desired ending inventory of twelve thousand we've got a beginning inventory of nine thousand so the 225 that we need to make these units, these 45,000 units, plus the desired inventory minus the beginning inventory means we're gonna to have to buy 228,000 pounds of Krupp. The problem tells us <clears throat> that Krupp costs $3.80 a pound. So our total cost of Krupp purchases for the first quarter are $866,400. Do the same thing for the second quarter. We're gonna produce 55,000 units. We need five pounds per unit. So to meet production, we have 275,000 pounds we need to buy of Krupp. But we wanna have some Krupp in the ending inventory, but we don't have to buy the Krupp that's in the beginning inventory. So we're gonna to have to buy 278,000 pounds of Krupp at $3.80 a pound for $1,056,400. We could do the same thing for dirt, which is the other component of our fertilizer. We know we're gonna make 45,000 units of the basic. It tells us that there's 10 pounds uh, per bag of dirt. So, so we need 450,000 pounds to meet production and we wanna have 20,000 pounds in ending inventory. We won't need to buy the 15,000 that was in beginning inventory. So our purchases of dirt are 455,000 for quarter one. Same thing for quarter two. It costs a buck 50 a pound so we know that our Direct materials budget for dirt is a million five hundred and fifteen thousand. We add our crop to our dirt as we often do in life, and we end up with a direct materials budget of three million four hundred thirty-seven thousand eight hundred bucks for the first half of the year. Okay, so we know how many units we're going to produce, so we can now create our direct labor budget. It tells us that it takes a quarter of an hour. Fifteen minutes is 0.25 of an hour at 12 bucks an hour to make each bag. Well, remember we said we're gonna make 45,000 units of the basic. Uh, 15 minutes is 0.25 hours. 0.25 times 45,000 means we're gonna need 11,250 labor hours to make our stuff. We're paying our guys 12 bucks an hour, so that's a direct labor cost of $135,000. Second quarter, same thing. Remember our production of basic two is 55,000 units in quarter two. 15 minutes is 0.25 hours. So that means we need 13,750 hours to create the bags for quarter two times 12 bucks an hour means our labor budget is 165,000. So let's care of the direct labor budget. Let's do the manufacturing overhead budget. This problem tells us that the manufacturing overhead budget shows expected cost to be 100% of direct labor costs. So there's lots of ways to apply overhead to work in process. Direct labor hours, direct labor costs, machine hours, kilowatts of electricity, square footage of the factory, whatever it is, this company has to use, happens to use direct labor costs. So it's super easy to create the manufacturing overhead budget. It's simply the same as the direct labor costs because we apply manufacturing overhead to work in process at the rate of one times the direct labor cost. Now let's look at the SG&A budget. There is a fixed portion of 150,000 and a variable portion of 10% of sales. Maybe that's sales commissions. So there's the fixed portion of our SGNA, and there's our variable portion. All we did was tell Excel to take 10% of the sales in quarter one and quarter two. We add the fixed and the variable, and we get our total selling general administrative expenses of 402,000 for quarter one and 465,000 for quarter two. And now finally, we can create the budgeted income statement, which was the whole point of this exercise to create these sub budgets here to get to the budgeted income statement. We know what our sales are. That's our 40,000 bags times 63 bucks, 50,000 bags times 63 bucks. We can get that from our sales budget. What about our cost of goods sold? Well, each bag has five pounds of Krupp in it at $3.80 a pound. That's $19 plus 10 pounds of dirt and a buck 50 a pound, that's $15. So 19 plus 15 means we have $34 of direct materials. Each bag includes 0.25 hours, 15 minutes is 0.25 hours at 12 bucks an hour. 
So 0.25 times 12 is three bucks an hour. So each bag has three bucks of direct labor um, cost in it. And the overhead is exactly equal to the labor cost because that's our rule for applying overhead. So each bag costs us 34 plus three is 37 plus three is 40. So we simply take 40 times the 40,000 and 40 times the 50,000 to get our cost of goods sold. Sales minus cost of goods sold gives us gross profit. Now we just have to subtract our SG&A, which came from this budget up here. Gross profit minus SG&A gives us our operating income. Then this uh, company has interest expense of $70,000. Let's assume that's $35,000 in quarter one, $35,000 in quarter two. That gives us our interest expense of $35,000 for a total of $70,000. Subtract that from our operating income to give us income before taxes. So please remember, interest expense is tax deductible. That's why when you get to finance class, you'll decide that debt is your cheapest form of capital because you get to deduct it, uh, the interest expense, on your tax return. So then we take a 30% of the income before taxes. That gives us our income taxes. We subtract the income taxes from the income before taxes and we end up with projected net income of 793100 So if we're going along during the year and it's the end of the first quarter and we've only got $2 million in sales, or if our expenses, our cost of goods sold are $1.8 million, we know that our sales are too low and our expenses are too high, so our earning morning system kicks in and we know we can do something to react to the bad news. And so that's just one way to create a budget.